Matthew chapter number 25, verse 14 to 30. How many of you have been blessed by the series that we... I don't, I, I, I'm not sure if we, we concluded, but uh, okay, we prayed, but then it seems like there is something that um, I might be concluding today. How many of you were blessed with it? It's, it's, um, I can't get, I can't get past Deuteronomy, and um, it's one of those things that you, you read, and then you think, and then you, uh, you try to apply, and then you realize, you know what? I've not reached anywhere close to what these scriptures intend for me to reach. So it, it's it's a constant it's a constant reminder of the, the the good things that God has in store for us, but then the part that we have to play, and that is why I want us to go through. Uh, I want us to go through this portion of scripture today. Hallelujah. And how many of you made it for this past week, fasting and praying? That was a powerful week. Ha, 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 ha. Okay. This is a common, common portion of scripture. We, 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 we have read it, you know, many times before. And God has been, uh, God has been taking us through the whole thing concerning um, being blessed and blessings being released and if you obey and we keep his commandments, we keep his laws then he's going to bless us, then he's going to increase you um, 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 if we adhere to his laws and his commands, if we live according to his will, then he's going to cause you to prosper, whatever it is that you do you shall prosper um, and you find this in Deuteronomy, you find this in Psalms, you find it in Ecclesiastes, you find it in Leviticus, you find it in so many places. It's as if from the day go, God just says, obey me, I bless you. Obey me, I bless you. Disobey me, curses and limitations. So it's, it's, there has never been any difference in that formula. That formula has always been the same. Now, uh, we are blessed. We shall be blessed. The blessed shall call us blessed. We shall, we shall lend and not borrow to nations. We shall be multiplied. We shall be increased. We shall be eh, all those things. It is also very, very important to understand that as much as God wants us to be blessed, we first have to remember that at the end of the day, it is him who gives us the blessings. And then it is also him who will teach us how to multiply the blessings and how to maintain the blessings and how to disperse the blessings, how to bless us. So, one of the callings, I'm a part and parcel of the major callings of human is that after they are blessed, they also bless others. Or whatever that God has given to you, we are going to be accountable. So, we, we have not just been... We have not been created for, for, for nothing. Or the talent you have is not just for you. It's not just, and these are things that you hear many times. But then I, I want you to understand that it is deeper than just, it's deeper than just being accountable to. It is also a preparation for his second coming. Hello? Matthew twenty five fourteen. It says, for it is like a man who was about to take a long journey. Okay, maybe, maybe let's start from 13 there so that we get a little bit of a context. Watch therefore, give strict attention and be cautious and active for you know neither the day nor the hour when the son of man will come. 14, for it is like a man who was about to take a long journey and he called his servants together and entrusted them with his property. Um, I want you to take note of the, of, 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 let's go back to 14. It says, it is like a man who was about to take a long journey. And he called his servants together and instructed them with his property, 15. To one, he gave five talents, probably about 5,000 USD. This is a probability, because for now, we are not even sure how much that, you know, how much it, uh, it, In a fananiana. Uh, to one, two, and another one, 
and, and to another one, to each in proportion to his own personal ability. Then he departed and left the country. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he gained five talents more. 17. And likewise, he who had received the two talents, he also gained two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Let's go. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. So, kuna accounts to be settled. Now, after, uh, okay. And he who had received the five talents came and brought him five more, saying, Master, you entrusted to me five talents. See, here I have gained five talents more. His master said to him, well done, you upright, honorable, admirable, and faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I will put you in charge of much. Enter into and share the joy, the delight, the blessedness which your master enjoys. So it is which the master enjoys. Okay? And he also... And he also who had the two talents came forward saying, Master, you entrusted two talents to me. Here I have gained two talents more. His master said to him, well done, you upright, honorable, admirable, and faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I will put you in charge of much. Enter into and share the joy, the delight, the blessedness which your master enjoys. 24. He who had received one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a harsh and hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you had not winnowed, as in the grain. 25. So I was afraid. Please mark that. Fear. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Imagine he's even, admi he's even admitting that he hid his talent. Here you have what is your own. So na kurudishia, uricho nipa. Uyu mwamba. <laughs> yani ukisikia, ukisikia, ukisikia boldness in foolishness. This guy was bold in his foolishness. So I was afraid. Uh, let's just go back so that we enjoy the foolishness. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Of all the places, eh? Ground. Because that is money. And in the original context, it is money. So he aka chimba shimo akazika killing sawa in the ground here you have what is your own so he resurrected the thing but his master answered him you wicked and lazy and idle where do you fall he's wicked he's lazy he's idle the idle part is what gets me. Idle servant. But he's still acknowledging he's a servant. Did you indeed know that I reap where I have not sowed and, gra and gather grain where I have not winnowed? Let's go. Then you should have invested my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent away from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. Because remember yule watano, ali produce tano, so mungu akamrudishia zile tano kwa waka wanazo kumi, asa anaungezewa na ile moja. So umezatu wana kumi na moja. Akenda kuinvest, akirudi, anashina mbili. Akenda kuinvest, akirudi, ana umetishi. For to everyone, because nikuwa badi nchisha, pari ndo likuwa mushu wa maisabi yao. <laughs> for to everyone who was uh, who has will for to everyone who has will more be given and he will be furnished richly so that he will have an abundance but from the one who does not have even what he does have will be taken away Let's go. And uh, we'll be taken away. And throw the good for nothing servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and grinding of teeth. The good for nothing. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, his majesty and splendor, and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. Now he's, he's giving a little bit of an explanation as well. But then um, 
uh, there comes a whole different a whole different parable afterwards now take me back to to verse 14 hallelujah okay now there is a whole context here which we have to understand that from from chapter 21 Jesus now nikama ananza kuatayarisha wanafunzi wake that I will be living, I will be living, I will be living, I will be living. So he has gone to the temple, he has done what? They have had these long conversations. He starts talking about um, 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 eschatology, the end times, how you're going to see these are the signs that you, you're you about, you know, the end is about to come, you're going to hear rumors of war, you're going to hear one nation fighting against the other, then all these things, he starts talking about them. And then... Um, and then now he starts talking to them. He gives them a few other parables. There is a f uh, the, the parable of the unfaithful servant. Then there is a parable of the wise and foolish virgins. You remember those five wise virgins and those five foolish virgins? Meaning, you know, the, 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 the preparations as in you prepare before you sleep. Or you prepare waiting for the second coming of the mass. Or you prepare waiting for, for these ones where the, where the virgins know they were waiting for the, for the bridegroom. Um, then he talks about the parable of the talents. All of this is towards the preparation of him living. And before that, now this one you see in the book of, you see this in Luke and John, where now even, even Mary now anoints him. And then prior to, to that in the book of John, he resurrects Lazarus, showing that there is power for resurrection. There is uh, a resurrection can happen, resurrection will happen. And then now in his preparation before he leaves, he's now talking to them that as much as you are my disciples, I need to prepare you that the talents that I'm giving you, the abilities I am giving you, the, 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 the supernatural power that will come upon you in form of the Holy Spirit and what he will be able to do through you or what you will be able to do by his empowerment, all of this you're going to be accountable one day. The blessings I'm giving to you, one day you're going to answer for them. Now, there are a few things that we can learn from this, from this particular portion of scripture. Like a man who was about to take a long journey. And that is why he's saying about to, because by this time he is not yet crucified. In fact, a little bit after that is when now um, 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 the, 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 the passion week begins. They catch him and then now wananza kumpeleka mahakamani anaojiwa and all these things. This, this unfair trial happens and then ana, 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 ana sulubiwa msalabani. Now he's telling them this is like a man who is about to take a long journey. And the reason Matthew had to write because this is the only, it is only in Matthew you're going to find this particular parable. The reason Matthew had to write this is because by that time Jesus has already died. And now they are waiting. So the church ni kama in a wanabishana. Because to them, you know, when Jesus would be, would be saying, I'm coming back soon. Ah, si tunajuu mwanangu? Anakujia kesho kuto yani. So they are waiting for him. And it, it looks like it's been too long. I mean, they, 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 they have been waiting and waiting. And then now wanaza kubishana. Like, where is this guy? He said that he's going to come back. So Matthew had to write this portion of, 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 um, or like to remind them of this portion of parable that Jesus had spoken. That he's going for a long journey. Now we do not know what a long journey is. Because a day can be like a thousand years before God. Hello? Today you guys are very serious. But I will serious against you. In the name of Jesus. So among them, now, their friction, Matthew writes the parable. And now he reminds them that he, this, by, by the time he was saying this, he was about to take that long journey. And now he is in that long journey. And then before he does so, he called his servants together and entrusted them with his property. Now, if we go to Corinthians, if we go to Ephesians, and if we go to Romans, and we, uh, and we look at all the type of gifts that the Holy Spirit would give to people in Corinthians chapter number 12, and then in, in Ephesians chapter number 4, and in Romans chapter number, I believe it is chapter number 12, where now you get to, where, where you, you get to see the, um, the redemptive gifts. Um, there is the redemptive gifts you find in Romans. There is the... 
there are the, 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 the five-fold ministries that you find in Ephesians, and then there are the gifts of the Holy Spirit you find in Corinthians. All these are given. Yes, in the beginning you hear that in, in Corinthians, it is the Holy Spirit who is giving us those gifts. In Ephesians, it is Jesus who resurrected, and then he left some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some teachers, some pastors. And then you come at the end in Romans, you believe that it is the Heavenly Father who gives those gifts. But we know that God is one and the same. So whether it's the Holy Spirit who gave those gifts of the Spirit, or it is Jesus who gave the fivefold ministry, or it's the Heavenly Father who did the redemptive gifts, all of them are coming from the same source. That's why to each one of us has been given a certain type of a talent, a certain type of a gift, a certain idea, a certain ability. You have strength, you have health, you have all these things. But all of these things come from the one and only God. And each one of us has been given according to our own ability. When we come to Corinthians, the Bible says that he gives as he pleases. So the Holy Spirit will give you, be it a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom or uh, discernment of spirits or speaking in tongues or whichever those are, those are. When he gives, he gives as he wishes. It's according to, he looks at you and he feels like, mm, I think so and so can do well with a word of knowledge. So an ampatia, it's according to his own will. But even if it is according to his own will, it is also according to the ability that he has created you with. When you go back to Psalms, the psalmist says, As in you formed me, everything about me, you, you have woven me together. So you know my, in, my, my incoming, you know my outgoing, there is nothing that is hidden before you. So because he has created you, he knows your abilities, either five or two or one. When you are now, to the one who is given five, let's go. He entrusted them with his own property. So, meaning the business you have is his property. Hello? The office you work in is his. I don't care if your boss is an Indian who does not recognize Jesus. Are we together? It doesn't matter if they are unbelievers. It, it, to me, it doesn't matter. What you have is his own. The education you're in right now, that degree you're taking is his own. The marriage you have, it is his own. Okay. So to one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each a proportion, uh, to each in proportion to his own personal ability. Then he departed and left the country. So now we know he's not in the country, but he has released a representative who is watching over you to make sure that you either come back with the five, the two, or he is watching as you are digging to bury the one, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Are we together? Okay. Let's go to 20. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them and he gained five talents more. Now here, here comes the multiplication effect. I remember if, 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 if you remember if you remember Pastor Michael, Michael Kintu, how many of you remember? He came and he spoke. He had some very, very deep revelations. And um, there is something that I left with, and it always, it, it will always, it will always ring in my mind about the the principle of conversion. The principle of conversion. Now these guys have the talent, but then there is there is not going to be a conversion from the talent into money or from the singing into money if somebody does not actually put to work 
that gift. Praise Jesus. It is the same way that Paul is talking to Timothy and is telling him to stir up the gift that is within him by reason of elders laying hands upon him. So whatever that we have been given, we are supposed to cause a multiplication to it. Once it has been multiplied, then the principle of conversion works to, 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 to convert the time, the sweat, the sacrifice, the whatever you have put into that talent so that it is converted into either money, health, longevity. Hello? Are we together? If you respond, you're going to make my work very easy today. Am I making any sense? Okay, okay, okay. So, ukiachana na the fact kwa kwamba, God has given you that idea. Um, God has given you perhaps, and, and this is where actually most of us miss it. Uh, we believe that capital is money. And uh, I've, I've had many people who would say, Pastor, I have this great idea. But the issue is, is, is in the money. As in, I don't have this money to do this. I don't have the money to do that. But actually, the capital you have is that strength. It is that breath. Hello? It is the people around you. That idea, once you present it to the right people, even money shall come. The issue is, you have that idea, or you have that gift, and you keep saying it is not yet time. In fact, even some of you, and you say, I have not felt that, that leading in my spirit. As in, you're, you're waiting for a leading to do business. That's why I'm taking you back to Psalms when he says, blessed is the man whose, um, 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 whose delight is in the laws of God. Because he says, whatever he does shall prosper. Are we together? Whatever he does, akienda kuchukua mchicha, akauza, shall prosper. Akienda migodini, akachimba, shall prosper. Akizawa watoto, shall prosper. Every good work must prosper. But there is one condition. He delights in the laws of God. Obedience. So we are together. So if something, in fact, I was, I, I was talking to, I was talking to um, a certain woman of God yesterday. And, and, and I would feel at times there is such a burden that is put upon servants of God um, where now people maybe leave a house or they leave a church and they say, ah, there, there is no anointing to, to help me achieve my dreams. Are we together? While it is actually the work that you do. Because whatever effort you put must produce result. He says you shall be fruitful in every good work. That is scripture. So if this person is idle and is praying, there is no effort anywhere. So there will be no result. So atatoka atasema, my pastor is not anointed. <laughs> I have seen this so many times, and I have heard this so many times. Until to a point, it's like, it's like those, those servants of God are put in a, in a certain place, in a certain corner, as if they are the ones that make people rich. They are the ones that, sio mganga kenyeji. Mganga kenyeji ndo ambaye, in fact, sio ya kwake pia. There are things you'll also have to do. Do you know the price these people pay? And that is why God would tell the Israelites, don't go searching, don't go asking them how their gods make them rich. Acha, like, don't ask. Because you might either be tempted to go along and do the same things because your God is telling you, to believe him, trust that he has given you the ability, and work. But their God is telling them, lete kukumbili, lete njiwa saba, lete nakile. Na kwa sababu minadamu tulivyo umbiwa. The, the doing is what makes us feel like we have participated. 
And that is why there are some certain, uh, certain types of faiths that really prosper. Because if, if, if they are given, because they have something tangible. It is tangible. If, if I have the water, then I know I have the anointing in my hands. Hello? Because the African setting tells you, you must have irizi, iliofungwa. Yani imani yako iwe ni kitu cha kuonekana. So it is no longer faith if it is sin. But God requires us to walk in faith. He tells Abraham, get up, go to a land where I will show you. Abraham has no idea where he is going. He just knows that he is one day going to be the father of many nations. Where are you going? I don't know. Me, God has just told me to follow him. In fact, he's going probably somewhere and there's like a camp here. He's camping, he will eat there for how many years? We don't know. And then God will tell him, okay, let's go to a land I will show you. Same way, you have the talent, you, you have been writing the songs, you've been writing the books, you have had these ideas on, on what to do. As in, you know your hands are good at it. But you're still saying, for now, I'm very busy with school. For now, I already have this employment. For now, I already have... There are all these excuses. Because to you, what you want is to see... I have a friend who tells me, I work better with numbers. Show me numbers, which is very good, by the way. You're supposed to know your numbers. However, if these are the numbers and somehow you have not met them, does not mean that you stop what you're doing. It is the land where I will show you. And in this land, God is saying, I am going to make you prosperous. In this land, he's saying, there shall be no poor among you. In this land, he's saying, I mean, we already know what the land has. But it is in that same land, he's telling you, you'll meet giants who will be more powerful than you. But I've already gone ahead of you. Are we together? This land, tunajua your land, ikoje. Do you think you're the only one who will be doing makeup? Hello? Do you think you're the only one who will be doing these, these major, major things that you have in mind? In fact, some of you think that your idea is the only idea. No! No! Come out of it. There are bigger and better and greater who have already gone ahead of you. But God says, I have gone ahead of you as a consuming fire. And as, as a destructive fire. That's why Paul is telling you, you run your own race. You think you'll be the only videographer? <laughs> Hello? You think you'll be the only graphic, you know, graphic designer? It's a lie. Are we together? There is another day I saw somebody has made ugali, blue ugali. I was like, you know what? This dish I shall not buy. Don't deceive me that I am eating blueberry ice cream. Because this is ugali. <laughs> they put color in it. Everyone is trying to stand out. We are in such a competitive world. And that is why if you're not competitive enough, if you can't handle that, God won't give you five. He knows you can't handle five. Utakufa pressure. He's that loving, by the way. He cares for you that much. Like, I want you to be alive while at this. So, take two for now. Once you have built up muscles with the two, I will come. Because remember, they keep going up. This two was given the two that, she, that he or she made. I'm glad to think she was a she. The two that... <laughs> now stop being jealous. Eh? I would like to, uh, yeah, the, the two that she added, now she had four. Hello? She's coming from handling two, she's not handling four. 
Later on, she will handle six. Excuse me, I said six. <laughs> She'll handle eight. The next time, she's going to handle 26. I mean, 16. <laughs> Lo, Molly Mosha. <laughs> that was my math teacher. <laughs> Mr. Mosha, Pastor Harriet knows him. We went to the same school. You see, that school was brought out some serious, <laughs> serious human beings. If you cannot handle one, I mean, God is not going to waste his, his talents. So the ability that he has already given to so-and-so, they know, and that's why they are people. The minute they get into the corporate world like this, they handle it very easily. They are meant for that place. That's their five. That's their two. That's their one. Mwanesu wa sifiwe. Mimi leo kanipeleka kwenye biashara. Nitalala chini flat. Pa. I know. I don't have the muscle for it. But I know people watakesha usiku. They are working on that one idea. Tell me to write a proposal. I will die. <laughs> I, I, I can't put together a proposal if it costed my life. Sawa? A, a proposal kwamba. You know that whole thing, mimi kwenye, kwenye finance. I even wonder how I managed to do... Uh, a new business administration as, as my degree and masters. Yes, masters as well. I did masters in international business. <laughs> the international business I'm doing is this. <laughs> it helped me. It has helped me, by the way, see organizations, see you knew, I don't know, um, um, human management, human resource management, see all those things, the many idea, one way or the other. But God was preparing me for the church. Now, you tell me the procedures to do export, import, I just remember those two words. But the procedures to do that thing, to me, honestly, when it would be finance. Pazari, that day you were preaching about it, I really understood you. That day Mwalimu anafundisha finance, I would freeze. <laughs> Properly. And then I would go, believe me, the teacher was the same. He would go to Elibari Kindosi. Sasa ndugu yangu, huyu Mwalimu mimi niki muangalia na waza vitu vingine. <laughs> By that time we are dating. So he's trying to teach me, so you balancing what? <laughs> me, I'm just looking at the guy, I'm like, hey, you guy, you, you, you are pretty, you, you guy, you, you. I was not listening, I was not hearing things. I was having my own thoughts, my own ideas. I said, you know what, I quit this thing. We had one class. <laughs> but how I got the pass, God knows. Same way, Pastor Harriet will tell you, we'll go to, to Bariki, atatufundisha, atatufundisha, tukitoka po tonodina si. God was there when I'm doing the exam. Wakati nafundisha, God was there. And God saw it is, it is fit. You get your C. You move with life. But, I thrived when I went to Bible school. Man, I could not wait for the next class. As in, because that's my area. That is home. I don't have to concord. I don't, I don't like, to me, I feel as if I should, have, I should have been living in the Bible times. Like, it is home. Tell me eschatology, man. That's why I got distinction. Yes, I was the best, by the way, in my class. Sasa, kwanini niangaike na finance? Wacha ni wachie wenye. Ile ndo tano yake. Mi tano yangu ikuwa kwenye. Bible and theology. And music. Are we together? Now God knows what to give to you. How and to what degree. That's why even in the music. Kuna kina Nathaniel Basi. Ma kuna kina Nsi Andumi. Are we together? That is the two he had. He multiplied it. 
Then he had the five. And after the five, he multiplied it. Then after the ten, he multiplied it. Then it's however faithful you become. If you're faithful with the little, you shall be trusted with more. The reason there is no more that has come is that the little you have not been faithful with. Are we together? And that what we have not been faithful with, we will be judged. We shall be accountable. Now I am, I am coming all this way because there is something I want us also to learn about crowns. That there will be crowns that will be given to us as children of God according to the work that we have done here on earth. Now they are going to be different depending on the type of sacrifice somebody has made. But tunanza kwanza na hapa. The hundredfold on earth before we go to the hundredfold in heaven. Because the ones that are in heaven, they are not going to be tangible. But here on earth, it's going to be tangible. But this which is on earth determines what we'll receive in heaven. Are we together what we And the enemy is working so hard to make sure, in fact, he's bringing in so much confusion to make sure that we, 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 we don't gain or we don't attain even that, heavenly, even that heavenly reward. So that's why he puts competition among the saints. Ding, 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 ding. You are in the same church. You both have the same idea. And the clients are the same. Hello. So, Ukiona huyu kashona gauni yake kwa mshona kwa nani? While it should be your own race, the competition is not against the other saint. The competition is against your old self. The competition is is uh, the competition is between January and June of your race. Are we together? The competition is not me and the other worship leader. He has his own race. She has his own race. Her own race. And the race is, am I doing what I'm supposed to do? What am I supposed to shed off of me so that I can do it better next time? Are we together? What character am I supposed to prune so that I can do it better next time? The competition is not how healthy your child is compared to how... Jamani, jamani, jamani. Being a new mother is an issue. Can I talk to mothers? When I first, and remember, God, God creates their children differently. My firstborn has never been fat. That, that's her morphology, as in, even if she eats, atapata tu, chicks. Ni mashavu tu ataonekana. She's tall, she's slender. Now, I have this little one. And around that same time, Kyla is Tumaini's daughter. Kyla was as in, you know those babies you everywhere is kissable. You know, like those lumptuous babies, eh? She was that. Now, Nangalia. So And then you go, now you go to the same nurse. clinic mtoto wako green yani kuna 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 chat zile kuna green alafu sijui gray alafu sijui what so mtoto wako anacheza between gray and green yani they are barely surviving if you're not careful <laughs> If you're not careful, you might now start overfeeding the child. What you're looking for here is health. You will start overfeeding the child because unataka kukimbizana na weight ya mtoto wa mwingine. Are we together? Michuko tu your analogy ambayo you know it's it's home it because it, it was a real issue for me because now even people would come and then they would tell you, "Hey, mtoto wako unamlisha nini?" Because people really have opinions when it comes to other people's children, by the way. Eh? They always have opinions. 
So you will hear, oh, by the way, there is this supplement that can really help the child. There is this what? Where are you up? Umeshasaga maboga. Umeshasaga. You have tried as many things, but the body. Divyo yilivyo, divyo inavyo pokea. That's her five. Hello? That's the best. So the issue here is in, have you done your best? And what do you define your best? Because some people's best is masamane, your concentration. After that, they are done. They need to sleep. But some people's best is eight hours of concentration. Hello? Are we together? Some people's best is arguing. <laughs> Don't bring a topic, my friend. They will find a point even within your point. The, uh, the, <laughs> the point you missed when you were arguing, they will have a way of turning it. In fact, by the time you're done, you're like, but I think we're speaking the same thing. Have you ever yeah. come across yeah. people? Yeah. Nimbishi, he's trying to tell you we agree but my agreement is better than your agreement that's their five put this person in the court of laws i can argue in cases are we together that is their five some are simply politicians they they have a way of convincing you to do something. Pastor, Pastor Dennis was, uh, Pastor Desire, Dennis Desire, was saying, somebody asked him, Evie, if you were not a preacher, what would you have been? The guy was like, ah, I don't even know. He said, ah, you would have been the best con man ever. Because <laughs> the guy has information. Now, if you can't concentrate, to gather all type of information from one portion of scripture like this, the book. And then you have four days of serious, you know, that is his five. That is his five. That is his five. You will do all your research. By the time you're done, 15 minutes, point is not exhausted. Are we together? That's why we don't... I remember actually one of us said, hey, I have a long way to go. And I was very thankful Pastor Lucy was there. She said, no, you don't have a long way to go. You have your own way to go. There's a very big difference. Because when you look at so and so, you might think, hey, siku nikifika pale, basi mimi dunia, nimemaliza everything. No, you, have, you might never get there. You might never get there. If Jesus was to say, the day I hit 50, <laughs> he never got 50. He was done by 33 something. And his ministry he did in three years. Are we together? What is your two? What is your five? What is your one? Because if we look at, at, at what we have, the, the, the reason, actually, for me, the reason I decided, now I'm going to the studio, was when Miles Monroe died. I said, eh, even men like this can die. You know, there are some deaths that wake you up. You sober up. Now, you can't be angry. You can't be angry, but They died, but they still speak. No, to me, I was like, okay, this music thing, who knows it apart from upper room ministry? Sinza. Who knows I can sing? I said, you know what? Even if it's just one song, let me go to the studio. I said, this one I'm not going to bury. I went to the studio. I did one song. I came back home. My husband played the song. He played it, and it was a demo. He played it. He played it as in that day, it's as if it was with some sort of a sherehe for, for him. Because like, I was looking at him and thinking, okay, this is what I am keeping the world from. Do you understand? 
unless you have done it, you will never know what you are keeping the saints from. The blessing you're withholding from the saints. So if you sit on it, if you bury it, there are many more who want to do exactly what you're doing, only that they're supposed to either do it better. Ah, because believe me, they'll come those who will do better than you. Or they have to see somebody akionyeshenjia. Now, if you keep to it, if, 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 if it dies in your hands, you are a wicked, lazy, and idle servant. Wicked. Why wicked? Because there is a song, if I don't write, somebody might not get born again. That is wickedness. Hello? Hello? There is a sermon, if I don't preach... Somebody will not come to Christ. That is wickedness. God has their plan. Perhaps he'll find a different plan for them. They will get born again. But I have missed out on a portion of my reward. Hello? So that's why trying to find the best or doing the best or doing greater things, it is not, it is not being an overachiever. It is fulfilling scriptures. You shall be the head and not the tail. Above only and not beneath. Only above. Yours should be the best. Because you have a mark of distinction. You, you have a God who lives within you. Mediocrity shall not be, should not be associated to your name. Are we together? Mediocrity is wickedness. I, they are not happy. You know, Zileza Boraliende. That's not how God wants it to be. He gave you his best. His one and only. He could have said, you know what? Uh, you know, let us have a malaika. Now I don't know if they have blood. But he could probably could have found any other alternative. But he gave us his best. Then why are we giving him the least? Why are we saying, you know what? I'm surviving. Let us just survive. Ah! You shall be richly blessed. It should be content. Now, you're richly blessed might be different from Ha, richly blessed. Bwane swa sifiwe. Apo ndi pompopo sasa, the differences come in. Diversity is one of the things that you'll commonly find in the kingdom of God. Hatuta kuwa wote sawa. But the, that which God has given someone, if they work on it, God keeps increasing them. That is the formality. That is the, that's the formula. Bwane swa sifiwe. We were talking yesterday with some pastors. And we go to this conclusion, like, you know what? Many Christians belittle what we have. We belittle the anointing that God has put upon us. We belittle the power. We belittle the ideas. We simply put, we just belittle everything. Because to us, we have been taught that, you know, average. <laughs> average is humility. Let there be no extremes. When you look at Abraham, he was extremely blessed, basically, because in everything. This guy was healthy. This guy grew to a hundred and something, something years old. So when it comes to blessing, it cuts across on everything. That's why I, I, I love what Pastor Fred would always say. You don't settle for anything less than the Lord's best. So what is that Lord's best for you? Because on that day, now when we are giving an account, there should be, well done, my good and faithful servant. At least there is that, there is that striving into doing it. And this is telling them, this is how you prepare for my second coming. You don't prepare for his second coming by just being holy. This is also being holy. Ah, can we talk? 
This is holiness. This is purity. Because by not doing this, you are wicked. And unfaithful, which is sinful. I don't know if you get it. Are we together? That teacher in you, that you're holding on to, that one, God that day will tell you, this one, this one right here, was supposed to give you that mansion. And then you, you said, ah, me, teaching. I probably first need to go get that certificate and then that uh, degree and then that masters and then that when when will you when will you start <laughs> when will you begin because somebody has to start somewhere are we together what we yes faithful and good servants of God because that should be it you 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 are a faithful and good servant until proven otherwise. And only God can come and prove otherwise. Because some of us, as we look at you, we might think, eh, hey, this must be the faithful and good servant. But actually, there are people who are looking at you, those that can see, and, and you know, there are people who can sniff your talents. They can tell, this one, their potential is really high. But on So, some people, that, that's, why, that's why there are, that's why we have pastors and teachers and prophets and what, so that they can equip you with what you need so that you can go out there and do the will of God. So that on that day, you'll be told, well done, my faithful and good servant. Have I done a good reminder to you? The reason I had to do this is because this whole series of blessings, blessings, blessings at times can put the people somewhere you know, ah, I'm just gathering, I'm just gathering. No, after the gathering, there is way more to the blessings that we just receive um, 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 externally. There is a blessing that we are building for in heaven. That's why Jesus says that you do not put your treasures on earth, but you put your, uh, your treasures in heavenly places, a place that no one, no one can reach. That's why we put our treasures. So once we are putting our work, our strength, our work, we are simply being stewards of what God, of God's resources. And those same resources are supposed to sustain us here on earth. And then those same resources, zikipimwa, kwa moto. Then you either get this type of a crown or that type of a crown or many types of crowns. Can we stand up?